Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about a specific topic and this is actually a topic that I am very interested in and pretty passionate about actually. I, I had a point in my life where I was working towards an art career. I knew that that's what I wanted to do. It was somewhere between high school and college and during college when I realized that I was stagnating. I was not improving and I wanted to figure out what the root of that was. Why was that happening? And ultimately, I came to the conclusion that I just wasn't going through what I needed to do to be able to self-critique myself. There were a lot of things that I was letting slide or things that I just wasn't even looking for and therefore I wasn't knowing to improve on it. So I, at that point, dedicated myself to figuring out how can I be more proactive as far as studying the work that I'm doing and putting those improvements into place. So today I'm going to focus on four very quick and easy ways that you can start seeing improvement in your work and start self-critiquing yourself to be able to see what points need to be worked on. That can be definitely tricky when you're working on your own stuff sometimes because you get so used to seeing what you're creating that it's hard to see what points are the things to focus on. So today this is all about little techniques that can help you see things in your work that you may not have noticed already before and to help build that up. And some of these may be very familiar to you and maybe they're things that you've heard of but haven't quite enacted. There are a couple, well, one in particular that I really need to get back into using more frequently. But let's go ahead and just get started with point number one and that is walk away and get fresh eyes on your work. This is the one that I really need to work on more. I tend to sit down and just burn through a piece. I just finish it. But there is huge value in being able to take some time away from your piece. I know that there are many times where I have looked at a piece and I've worked on it for so long, oftentimes in the sketch phase where I know it's just not right, but I can't quite figure out why. And I am just so used to seeing all of those lines all the same way because I've been staring at it for hours and hours. And ultimately the the biggest fix that I can do at that point is to step away from the piece. Sometimes it's just for 10 minutes. Other times I need to step away for a full day. And once I come back to it, my, my brain has reset. I've stopped recognizing that piece at the point that I was at when I was working on it before I stepped away. I begin to be able to see it for what it is, which helps me see, okay, well, this area is the part that's not working or, oh, that proportion on the body is just totally wrong. And I wasn't paying attention to that. I was paying attention to something else. And once I stepped away from it and I was able to take in the full piece, I could see these little details that ended up being the point of the piece not working. So once I take a step back, I can see it with fresh eyes, I come back and I can fix it and it immediately just puts itself back together and it helps me be able to move on and finish it and make it correct. And tip number two is the inch by inch method. Now, what you can do is you can take a sheet of paper and cut out an approximate square inch out of the center of it. And you take that sheet and you look at every single square inch of your piece. This is incredibly helpful to be able to see areas of your piece that you may have neglected. And I know that this is something that I did a lot up until into college. And this is where I learned this technique is there are many times where I'm really just completely focused on the focal point, on the figure, on the face, because that is what I'm most interested in. And I would get a little bit lazy on some areas of the piece. Say it's the fabric folds where I just got, I got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty much done with this. I just have to hurry past the rest of the stuff. This technique opened my mind to the fact that, that I really do need to focus on every single part of the painting because ultimately if the focal point looks really great, and the rest of the piece is just a step behind it in the craftsmanship, that piece will be pulled down. And this really just helped me prioritize the fact that I need to make sure that all details are as highly refined and correct as the things that I was most focused on. So again, this just, this helps open your eyes to what you should be looking at. It helped me a lot and it's, it's, it definitely helps me analyze where my priorities are when it comes to a piece. And this step can be really eye-opening in the long run because it helps you see what areas or steps you might be rushing past 
typically. I know that there was a point where I realized that all of my backgrounds were very very rushed or I would work on again the main figure in the face and then the clothing would be a lot looser or I would move past the sketching phase way sooner than I should be when I really should be refining the entirety of the piece a lot more. So it does just help you see different details that you're not prioritizing that ultimately you may want to. And when I say refined, I don't necessarily mean highly detailed because that is 100% a personal choice. A lot of paintings will have it where the things that are closer to the, to the viewer are much more refined. And then things, as they get farther away, they become more impressionistic and less sharply detailed. And again, that's just realistic. That's the way that things can be. So really when I say refined, I just mean the time is put in to make sure that it is correct and that the the details and everything that needs to be there are there and that you've given it all the time that it needs. And tip number three, this is again a very common one. It's one that I'd like to use more of, but it is probably one of the most common ones that I do use. I just need to remember to make it happen more often, but this is the mirror flip. So if you're looking, well, if you're working traditionally, you can hold your piece up to a mirror and it'll instantly make it look different. Your brain will stop seeing it the way that it thinks it looks like, and you'll be able to see what it actually looks like. You'll see the errors and the things that can be fixed. Now, if you're working digitally, you can do the horizontal canvas flip. It'll flip it over so that basically it's the same effect. It's like you're looking at it through a mirror. And this is so helpful to be able to see those errors that you you have a feeling something's wrong, but you can't quite pinpoint what it is. This is very helpful in anatomy, particularly. I know that when I draw, I almost always end up drawing the foreshortened eye. So if it's at a three quarter angle, one of the eye is foreshortened. I almost always draw it too small and too low. And I'll look at the face and I know that something's just not quite, it's not quite there. It's not quite right but I'm not able to see what it actually is because I'm so used to seeing faces that way because I always draw them that way. So once I flip the canvas, boom, it just instantly, I can clearly see that the eyes are no longer straight and they're not symmetrical. And it's actually really, it's kind of a really cool effect when it's something that's, that's like that, that I know is off. And once you see it, it immediately, it's obvious, it's apparent when just a second ago you didn't see it anymore. It's almost like a magic trick, but but this is, this is something that I try to do pretty frequently when I am working, especially digitally, where I'll just flip it back and forth every once in a while to make sure that, that it is getting as accurate as possible. This is definitely very helpful when you are sketching to make sure that the bones of your piece are as accurate as possible all along the way. And for the final tip, tip number four, this one is a little bit more long-term than the others, but it's probably the one that has been the most influential for me improving my work. So if you watch much of my videos, you'll notice that I do try to make a point of pointing out the, the issues that I had with the piece, the things that I struggled with, as well as the positives. I don't usually list every single con and every single positive because there's, there's a lot more on my list for that. But at the end of each piece, I I usually try to write them down or it might be a mental list, but I will write down the pros of the piece, things that I thought I really improved on, things that I really enjoyed, things that worked well in that piece. And I also have a column that has all the cons, things that I really struggled with or things that I felt like I was never able to actually successfully correct or fix. And this has been extremely beneficial for me because I'm able to keep track of what things do I want to try to fix? What things am I happy with? What things are a big issue and a concurring issue? So a lot of times after I've done a piece, especially one where I've really struggled with it. So say I've really had a hard time with the composition and in the end it was just, it never got quite right. I knew it was just never right. And that's in my con list. I like to move on to the next piece with that thing in mind, with that goal. I like to move on to the next piece and plan out a piece that I can get the composition really, really good. <laughs> One that I can be really proud of and happy with where it turns out and, and I can move that into the pro list for the next piece. That is just 
so encouraging to be able to look at your past pieces and your past lists and see, yes, I succeeded in finishing that. Maybe I didn't get it correct in this piece, but it made me analyze it and figure out what I can learn from it. And then I was able to successfully finish it in the next piece. This is just, it built a habit of me being able to look at each piece and see the cons as a positive because it's the next step. It's the thing that I get to focus on next and I get to achieve it in my next one. Now, there are some things that that take a lot more time and end up being on my con list or to work on list for a lot of my pieces. So a little while ago, I realized that I wanted my faces to be a little bit more accurately proportioned. I wanted to be able to reference more realistic planes in the faces. So that was something that was on my con list for a few months, actually, where I was really I was focusing it on each piece and I knew that I hadn't quite gotten it there yet. So it was always on the back of my mind and it was always on that list for me to pay attention to. And that is why it's just so helpful is that it can be really short term goals that you can immediately fix and you can get that, that rush of being able to accomplish something that you really struggled with. But it also helps you keep track of your long term goals as well. And that's it for today. I do have a link down in the description that'll take you to every single tool that I use today to create these two pieces. And I also have a link that'll take you to my art shop and that's where you can get prints of these two available. The originals already do have a home, but if you'd like to own a print, again, those are down there. And yeah, I think that is about it for today. I will be back next week with another video with more art. So stay tuned for that. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.